Welcome everybody, and this is finally the comeback of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the anime. Diamond is Unbreakable Part 4, we are here after long waiting. We didn't know if it was going to happen, it did. Um, but yes, here's a review. Before, however, we get into it, I just want to do a quick mention that if you have not have watched, if you have not watched part one, two, or three, I would highly advise you to at least part three because um, part four kind of takes off with one character from part three, Jotaro Kujo, um, who you guys will get to know. And yes. Part 1 and 2, some people say, are skippable if you don't want to go through the entire series, but at least watch Part 3 uh, before you get into Part 4. So now, without any more hesitation or waiting, let's get into the review. Now, the first episode of um, Diamond is Unbreakable it simply goes into the story of of Jotaro encountering Josuke. This is the, this is the name of the episode as well. Um, Jotaro meets Josuke. Uh, we just start off with Jotaro in the car, giving a little bit of back uh, background information. Then him coincidentally coming across Koichi, a secondary character who um, will play a, a good lead, a good secondary role, I guess this would be to say, and. After that, we meet Josuke himself. He is a high schooler. He's still going to school. Um, his introduction is perfect, just like Jotaro, like Jotaro in the in the prison cell in part three. Um, Josuke's introduction in this part, like him being really sincere, um, and then the realization that you can't say shit about his hair because otherwise he'll get pissed off and beat the crap out of you. That is great it separates him from the rest of the jojos at the very least um a small minor complaint that i do have is and if you guys know anything about this in the comments please put it in there i just don't understand why they call him jojo um his name is josuke higashikata and like with joseph jonathan and jotaro it was it was understandable why but with Josuke, I don't see any real purpose of calling him Jojo, to be honest, other than us knowing that he's a Joe star. Um, I'm not even sure we even get to see a star on, on the back of his neck um, at all throughout this part. So, further, what happens? Josuke um, beats up these, peep, these, these uh, let's say, bullies, I would say. Beats him up. We get a small introduction between um, between um, Jotaro and Josuke. There are dynamic going on, like Jotaro being like the tough guy, just like in part three. Uh, Josuke being the sincere, goofy type of guy. And then we also get the information that Josuke is actually Joseph's son. And the reason why Jotaro came to talk with Josuke was because he has a part in, of the inheritance of Joseph, which leads to, of course, a lot of chaos with Susie Koo that we don't um, really get to see, but we hear about, and and Jotaro also informs us that there is something weird going on. Um, of course, Josuke, Joseph's stand, excuse me, Joseph's stand, um, the per, the hermit purple, um, purple hermit, uh, basically allows him to get visions of other stand users or or like. You know, him smashing the camera or like a device and basically showing a image of someone. Um, while they were trying to look for Josuke, they instead came across that a certain weird stand. And Jotaro, doing his research, found out that it's actually a criminal, a mass murderer, um, who was supposed to die at some point during prison but escaped and is still alive lurking out somewhere. Then we get possibly my favorite part of the of the entire of the entire episode which is a Josuke versus Jotaro fight and it's just this casual moment of these girls coming up to hog Josuke's attention and Jotaro being Jotaro being getting pissed off about this and being like yo tell these bitches to get the fuck out of here um and they i believe his wording is 
they can talk about your stupid hair uh, another time or something like that. And that's where Josuke loses it, of course. And he uses, like, Crazy Diamond, fucking beautiful. Another minor complaint, calling him Shining Diamond, what the fuck. Um, I hope this was, like, an April Fool's joke. Because uh, I want to see... His name is Crazy Diamond, and Crazy Diamond it is. The outcome basically just shows... Uh, shows Jotaro stating that that he would have gone fucked up if he took the blow. However, Jotaro has a time stop. He uses Star Platinum, the world, and gets away and punches without a stand. He just punches uh, Josuke with his fist. Um, and that's kind of where the, the fight stops. And then a small transition to Koichi saying like, oh, we're going to miss the school, the school, um, the school get together, the, the school ceremony, production ceremony. Um, and after that, they find out they're in the same class, blah, blah, blah. They come across this bandit who's taking this girl hostage. And by this time, we are already introduced. We get a minor introduction to Angelo um, and his stand that works around vapor, if I'm not mistaken, or anything liquid or vapor, if I'm not um, mistaken. And he uses that to manipulate people. And long story short, he manipulates this bandit. This bandit takes the takes the girl hostage. He, of course, says something wrong about Yo- Josuke's hair. Josuke gets in there and he fucks him up. He uses Crazy Diamond um, to grab the bandit's knife, stick it through him and the hostage, gets the girl out of there, but in the process leaves the knives in his stomach. Now, Crazy Diamond's ability... What is it? It's basically anything it touches reverts back, can revert back to its normal state. Um, and that is if Josuke chooses that to happen. Uh, and that's kind of where the episode ends. Uh, except that, no, Angelo Stance gives him a little bit of a warning like, yo, I know who you are and I'm going to find you and I'm going to destroy you. Um, and we see Angelo towards the end, like getting close to Josuke's mom, and that's the transition towards next uh, week's episode. So, overall score for this video, for this episode, I when I do reviews, I'm going to go off three things, which is one of them the animation, then the pacing, and the last one will be the value of this episode in con- like in compared for the overall plot. And this will mostly go for series that I am already familiar with. So, animation. The animation looked clean. Beautiful. It looked clean. I can't complain too much other than the fact that... It's not really much of a complaint, but it's more of an understanding that they're trying to go to a different style with this. Because Potch Tree's original art in the manga was was pretty different to how Part 4's... Um, art style ends so my guess is the animators were thinking in the long term so they decided to adjust their animation style and keep it like this so it'll be coherent throughout the entire um throughout this entire part which is understandable um i kind of wished i don't know it's hard to say because I like sticking to the source material, but I kind of wish they stayed a little bit with that first part because Josuke in the manga, at the first in the first parts of the of the manga, he looks tuggish. He looks like straight up Jotaro in Stardust Crusaders, um, with his hair and his face. Um, but they clearly adapted that, which is a minor complaint, not that big of a deal. Again, Jotaro. He looks. Uh, this is a complaint among many of the Joe's of uh, the Jojo's Bizarre Adventure fans right now, and that is that Jotaro looks younger than he did in Part Three. Um, yeah, the animation style definitely does something for the overall appearance of the of the current four parts. Um, and the last complaint would be the shining diamond. I just don't like that, but that has little to do with animation overall. Crazy Diamond looked well animated. I did some some pauses in between, and the and the art style looks meh. Pacing well paced. We got our introduction. We got our description of the characters. Um, we got our small introduction to the first villain, all in one episode. So well paced. 
um, and the value of this to the overall plot, I would say that it does a decent job. It's not. It doesn't do an excellent job because the because the series itself starts a little bit slow. I would say we don't get our main villain towards like right now. We get him towards later in the series, and it does at least a good a good thing in explaining our protagonist, our secondary character, um, our tertiary character, um, the stand that's going to be used, and our first villain. So. That in itself, it does a great job. I'm not gonna give the episodes any points. I feel that I feel that the description that I just gave for those three should be enough. Now, from here on out, I'm going to talk a little bit into more spoilery territory things, um, things that I wrote down over here because I really want to talk about. So, if you have not watched or watched any JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, if you have not read this part then at the very least um it's wise for me to inform you that from now on i'm going to be talking straight up spoilers if you don't want to be spoiled cut the video off right now thank you for watching subscribe like the video otherwise please stick around give you three seconds one two three we're good okay now spoiler territory that introduction of the little music tune rolling in and then you hearing then you see basically the hand like for a second i legit thought this was going to be like an introduction to um joseph's mom like her just having dinner and then you see the 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 angle go back and you see everything in the shot and you see that hand cut off oh god since you're watching this you already i'm assuming you read and you know what what that means joshi kagakira Oh my god, I'm I'm hyped. I'm hyped. I want to see. I want to see. Oh my god, I want to see this stand so bad, Killer Queen. <sighs> so, yes, that introduction, perfect. The intro song. I'm curious as to what they're going to choose and whether or not we're going to get the introduction song, the opening in either this week or in this upcoming week or within two weeks, because so far JoJo has done an amazing job with their opening songs. Um, my personal favorite will always be Stand Proud. Um, um, second, close second will be uh, Sono Shino Sadame. Um, but yes, curious to see to hear that opening song. Um, something weird that I found was just within the episode, since we're talking spoilers, is the way that uh, Jotaro uses uh, Star Platinum the World. It's just a little bit weird because i had to reread that chapter just to make sure um if if this was just something added by the animators or if it was um from the original material and i can assure you that that jotaro bumping into koishi him dropping his stuff and jotaro just using star platinum the world just for that for like picking up all the stuff without him knowing it um that is canon and I just found it a little bit weird for him to do so. I mean, Jotaro is good in heart, and I can see him doing it, but him just casually using the world, and after that, after that, during his fight with with uh, Josuke, stating like it's been like ten years since I've used the time stop. I'm like, no, no, you didn't. You used it this fucking afternoon. Um, Another cool thing that I liked about this episode was just the fact that they state that that Jotaro says that like he would have gone messed up if if um, if Josuke hit him with Crazy Diamond, and it is also stated in the manga, if I'm not mistaken, that Crazy Diamond is physically stronger than than um, Star Platinum, and him being the second strongest physical stand, if I'm not mistaken, because I believe that that the uh, the next secondary slash tertiary character that we're going to get introduced to afterwards, um, either episode three or four, I'm willing to say, I'm willing to to guess, will be um, will be Okuyasu, and he his stand this the hand, which is by the way my favorite secondary character aside from Pol Polnareff. So his stand the the hand, I believe his is the strongest, but his is also the slowest. Um, Star Platinum comes in third place, if I'm not mistaken, and Crazy Diamond comes in second. But yeah, 
The other thing with Okuyasu's stand is, of course, he's a dumbass, so he doesn't know how to use his overpowered frigging ability. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is just the current state of Josuke, in my opinion, on him. When it comes to JoJo's, I would say, and this being someone who read all the parts so far and is reading Jojo Leon, um, I would say that Josuke it would be my easily my third favorite Jojo. I like Jotaro a lot. I know there's a lot of hate towards him, but I like Jotaro a lot just for the simple reason of him being the cool guy and him being the strong guy. And that's kind of a simple thing. Um, Joseph coming in second place and third would be Josuke, but Josuke is a close second, I would say. Um, close second space. Um, Josuke is being well portrayed. I'm glad, like I mentioned earlier in this video, that he has his, his personal little traits of him being goofy. He is, he is still, after all, a high schooler. So that is really important to keep in mind. And I'm looking forward to the to, to this friggin' part four. I'm, I'm wondering what they're going to show, how fast they're going to show it, and um, if they're going to cut any, any enemies out, if there's any story elements that are going to be cut out, because there is, unfortunately, in this part, some villain of the week thing going on, and I could understand them cutting that off due to budget restraints, but overall, like great start jojo you are back i can't wait to see more thank you for watching this video if you made it this far please hit the like button comment if you want um share would, sharing would be a great thing my name is dlpov and i do reviews of manga anime movies occasionally games and a lot of retrospective of 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 all kinds of nerdy shit <laughs> thank you for watching bye